disinfect it a little bit. And then you go ahead and you take your stapler. Move this out of the way. So you need to, if you have a wound, you're going to want to pinch that wound together so that the skin is even. Now, because I don't have a laceration on my arm, the skin is already together. But then you would take and line the stapler up itself here. You've got a little arrow on it even that shows right between here is where you want to center your wound. You take the stapler and then just... Hey, we have all been there. We have seen a dog get injured in the field. Whether that be your dog or your buddy's dog, it happens. Hunting dogs are out there. There's a lot of things that can hurt them. And if you haven't seen a dog injured in the field, hopefully you don't see one soon. But in case you do, uh, we want to talk about how important it is to have a fully stocked med kit, know what's in that med kit, and how to use it. My name is Ethan Pippett with Standing Stone Kennels. I'm going to show you what we put in a med kit, um, and then one lucky person is going to get this $550 value med kit to have on their next hunting trip. So first and foremost, the bag. We want to thank our sponsor, Mission Mercantile, for giving away this awesome bag uh, for us to be able to stock it with stuff for you. To start off with, this bag is part of their White Wing Legacy Edition. Um, this is really high quality leather. The outside here is waxed, 18 ounce canvas, so that's really heavy duty and water resistant. And then on the inside, they've got an entire lining that is thousand denier nylon. This thing is awesome. And with the big brass zippers on the outside, it's a bag that's gonna last forever. It's a big part of why we wanted to be able to utilize this for uh, putting together this med kit. So now we're gonna look at some of the things that we're gonna put in our med kit here. Starting on the right side here, I've got an extra stapler because uh, this is one of those things that I think is important for everybody to know how to use, especially in an emergency situation. You've got a dog that gets cut up pretty bad. If you can get a few staples in that and get them to the vet, it's gonna be a lot better off. So at the end here, I'm gonna actually show you how to use both the stapler and the staple remover. We'll set this off to the side. Now we've got a couple things, one of which is a muzzle. If you've got a dog that's pretty injured um, or something is very painful, being able to put a muzzle on them is gonna not only keep you safer, but it's gonna help them to settle down. We have pill pockets. When you have a dog that is sick or if you've got um, anything, we've got several different types of pills here that you can give to the dogs and pill pockets just make it not that much easier to get them to take the medicine so you don't have to try and jam them down their throat. Um, put them in the pill pocket, they take it much easier that way. Now, all of these things we tried to put in little plastic containers to make it easier to pack and store in the bag itself. And to go through this one, we've got a few things that are kind of your go-tos. We've got triple antibiotic ointment. That's gonna be really good for any minor cuts or scrapes, trying to help keep an infection from starting. We have EMT gel, which is also very important. We have OptiCare OptiLube. Now this is one that you're gonna use a lot. Uh, this is gonna go hand in hand with your eye wash. Anytime you see seeds or something like that in the, eye, in the dog's eyes, it's going to be great to use this sterile eye wash, but then you need to lube. This is important. This is very important. We have in here that bond. This is basically like super glue, but it's specifically designed for helping to glue cuts together. And it's vet bond, so it's designed for dogs, packaged for dogs at least. Styptic powder, this is gonna help with bleeding, whether you have clipped a nail, quicked a nail, excuse me, or you have small cuts and scrapes, this can help to stop bleeding. If we have a dog that's suffering from any type of hypothermia, any of us that are waterfowl hunting, sometimes dogs can be out in that water too long and they can get cold. This is a thermal blanket. You've got a one-time use out of that bad boy. And all of these things over here on the right, package right back up in this container. These are Loctite and they have um, seals on them to kind of help keep this stuff dry and ready to go. Now as we come across here, we have our bandages. 
You can never, if you've got a dog that's bleeding, something like that, you can never have enough bandages. But we have gauze pads. Some of these are wrapped up here. Um, we have no chew vet wrap. Uh, it's going to help a lot with keeping the dogs from messing with it. Now, this is, this is not a 100% thing, but it does have a bitter flavor, and it will deter most dogs from continuing to chew or mess with the manage. We have padding. Anytime you're, you're dressing a wound, you're going to want to have some gauze in there. You're going to want to have padding so that you don't over-tighten your vet wrap. That's uh, something that I think a lot of people will make a mistake with the first time they're trying to vet wrap something up. If you don't have enough padding in there, you start wrapping that vet wrap on there and it gets tighter as you go. You'll come back and look and your dog's paw starts to swell up because you've got blood flow restriction cut off. So this is definitely something to pay attention to, having lots of padding in there um, so that when you wrap it up, it doesn't get too tight on the dog's leg or paw. Now these things again, They'll go right into this little lockable container. And that one locks up as well. Now, a couple of these bottles that we have in the back, I mentioned this one already. This is going to be your sterile eye wash. This is going to be good for flushing out seeds or um, any other kind of debris that can get in the dog's eyes. But remember that OptiLube. Always lube after you do um, any kind of eye wash. Now, I talked to uh, an ophthalmologist that actually specializes in dogs in the past, and she said that most eye issues can take care of themselves by flushing properly, properly and keeping the eye lubed. If it has not fixed itself within two to three days, you need to be seeking veterinary care. Now, that's obviously going to be minor things. You've got a little scratch or a little bit of irritation and puffiness in the eye. Try the eye wash. Try the lube. If it's not getting any better in three days, you need to see a, doc, a vet. And if it's getting worse at any point in that time, you need to go to the vet. This, we've got little spray bottles. Ta-da! Um, makes a really great way to rinse any kind of cuts, lacerations, chlorhexidine. This is a excellent disinfectant. Spray that all over. This is already diluted down, so it's perfect to just spray right on any wounds, and it's going to help prevent any infection. Now, with all of these things that we've got, again, I am not recommending that you start doing all of your own veterinary care. This is to help you get out of the field and to the vet. But chlorhexidine spray, we've got a couple bottles of that. I mentioned lap pads are going to be important. We've got two little containers, one with dry pads and one with pre-soaked down with chlorhexidine. These are not 100% waterproof containers, but they, um, they are pretty darn close and there's not enough excess chlorhexidine in here to leak all over the place. So we've got those bad boys. We have an ear wash. This is just a basic ear cleaner, unmedicated. It's gonna help if your dog gets a little bit of a dirty ear, or again, you can use it to flush out seeds or other debris in the dog's eye ears. Always make sure to flush, rinse, and then use um, some of these lap pads here just to help dry their ear out. That's the way you want to leave them. Ears are healthy ears are dry ears. We have probiotics. Uh, one of the things that happens a lot to our dogs on the road is they get uh, upset stomachs. Probiotics are going to help with that. If you have a severe diarrhea or slightly more severe diarrhea situation, we've got Imodium. That's going to help with any of the diarrhea aspects of things, as long as you don't have something more serious going on. In this book, we talk about dosages. We'll get to that here in a second. We have Benadryl. This is really good for any kind of allergic reaction. Um, that would include snake bites for those of you guys in the South. The venom from a snake bite acts similar to an allergic reaction. So Benadryl and keeping the dog quiet until you can get them to the vet is a really good start. Our dogs hunt and work hard. Um, sometimes dogs can have a glucose bottom out and they can actually get glycemic um, seizures, glycemic induced seizures. If you have a dog that bottoms out at all, they need a little boost. We've got honey, it's raw and filtered honey. Um, I believe it even says organic. Yep, organic even. So the best honey for our dogs. This will be a great situation. Um, 
if you have that dog that seems a little wobbly or they seem like they've just worked too hard this morning, uh, this will be a, a good thing. Get them a little bit of honey in their system, give them a break. Make sure they're getting plenty of water with that too. So there is a little bit more room if you can add something else into this specific container. Some things that are not included this, in this that would be medicine-based are gonna be antibiotics. We don't have any of those things in here, but if you talk to your vet, uh, a lot of vets are going to be willing to work with you. Say, I've got a hunting dog. I'm going on a trip. Um, you know, we're going to be out in the middle of nowhere. And most of them are going to give you um, something as well as give you the instructions on when and how to use that. But that's going to be something you need to talk to your specific vet about. Next, we have one more little container here that has a little bit of room left in it. These are gonna be some things that are important as well. Nail trimmers, if you have a dog that breaks a nail, first of all, nail health is very important. Keep those nails short and you're gonna have drastically less issues, but even short nails sometimes can break or crack. Um, nail trimmers like this are gonna help to be able to trim those up in the field as well as use your stipic powder to stop any bleeding with that. We have a thermometer. Thermometer is gonna be your go-to. Your dog does not seem right. You go, hmm, something seems off. Check their temperature. It's gonna be a great indication if something's going on. Now, with this little digital thermometer, we also have uh, thermometer covers. So when you check a dog's temperature, you're gonna do it rectally. Having the cover on there, pull it off, throw it away. We have some cotton swabs, just regular Q-tips. Those are gonna help if you have a seed that you can't necessarily get out of their eye. You can, a lot of times with that cotton swab, you just basically touch the seed and it sticks to that cotton swab and pulls out. Or anything else you can use a cotton swab for. We've got some of those in here. One thing that we wanted to uh, make sure and include, a lot of us are seeing some issues that are gonna be in low light situations. The end of the day, you get back to the truck and that's when you realize, you know, cause our dogs work so hard and they're so tough, you go, wow, now we've got a cut. We've got a little flashlight. This is small enough that it'd be easy to hold in your mouth so that you can see exactly what you're looking at. We have a set of hemostats in here. Those will be good for any situation that you need to pull something. That could be cactus or that could be porcupine quills. Um, but hemostats in here if you need them. We also have two sets of tweezers, um, one that's a finer set and then one that's a little bit heavier set of tweezers so that you've got bigger things, finer things. But tweezers, those will be awesome if you get something stuck where it isn't supposed to be. So these things all pack back in here. Let's put these guys on the bottom. These things all pack in here really nicely as well as there is room in this box for a few more things if you think of something else you want to add. This lid again pops right back on top of that. Keep everything clean and dry. We have a set of scissors. Um, these are great because they're blunt tipped. These are actual um, surgical scissors I think is what they're called. Uh, they they would be designed to slide underneath of bandages that you put on. And again, they are blunt so that they're not gonna stab like a regular pair of scissors just pointing on the end. These are rounded as well as have this specific edge on the bottom so that you can slide it underneath bandages, cut them off as you go. So we've got those guys in there. We have, we'll touch on this book last. We have a sterile stapler and staple remover. Those will be important. I mentioned that before, emergency situation stuff, it's gonna be important to be able to, the stapler more so, staple remover we can use later, but in that situation, you've got a dog that's cut up. I mean, we've seen a lot. Our exposure rate with our dogs is really high. We're in the field a lot, we're hunting a lot. And if you have a situation where the dog has cut themselves pretty badly, um, having a stapler, feeling comfortable using it is gonna be important. You can get that guy closed up and get him to a vet. Set these over to the side here. Nobody wants to talk about this one, but it's important to also have this. Uh, Nature's Miracle makes some really great stuff. They have their own uh, skunk odor eliminator. 
Yes, skunk odor happens, especially if you're hunting up north, it seems like. There always is a skunk hiding in the cattail sloughs in the prairie pothole region up there. I don't know why they like that so much, but um, having this can be a lifesaver. Pretty much anything plastic, like their collars, it's gonna hold skunk smell for quite a while, but this is gonna get that skunk smell out of their coat relatively quickly. Um, one of the things that it mentions in here though, this is a, an enzyme-based product, so the enzyme actually eats the odor, makes it go away then use just a standard pet shampoo after that. You can find those just about anywhere, but make sure and wash this out of their coat after you finish up. We have two more things here. Um, hydrogen peroxide. Try, uh, if at all possible, not to use this as wound care. Use the chlorhexidine. It's proven to be better and less caustic to the actual wound itself for preventing healing. Um, this is to help your dog vomit. There are also in the book the appropriate amount of a dosage of peroxide for your dog, but if you saw them swallow something or you know they swallowed something that could potentially cause a lot of issues, this is gonna help to induce vomiting. A fresh new bottle is said to work better. So we got a little bottle. This will kind of be a one-time use deal if you need to induce vomiting and then try and replace it with a, again, a brand new small bottle. We have tough foot. I think that uh, the average guy sees quite a few issues with pads, especially when they start hunting. If your dog isn't properly conditioned or used to running those pads hard, or you just end up hunting in some place that has some pretty harsh conditions either a lot of rocks or sand even can wear those. And you just think about sand being abrasive, um, but tough foot's a great thing. The product is primarily uh, alcohol and then iodine or benzenide, um, but it's gonna help to toughen up their pads and help heal them if you get any kind of cracks. Now, if you know you're gonna be in a place where the conditions are gonna be hard on your dog's feet, I would start this right away um, not after you've already seen a problem, and it's gonna help prevent that from, from becoming a bigger issue. The other side of it is you can look into some boots. We don't have boots included in the kit, but this is, um, this is one of the best products out there for pad repair on dogs. Lastly, we have a little book. This book is very comprehensive, especially for as small as it is, but I want to mention to you Make sure and read the book. Not when we have a dog that's cut up or injured or something else be sorting through here going, hmm, broken leg, take them to the vet. Um, read the book through, have some familiarity with both what's in the kit and in the book, and then refer back to it if you need to. For example, I don't have dosages memorized, so I go, okay, the dog needs um, some Benadryl because it looks like we're having an allergic reaction. Let's try that. So on page 86 of this book, it talks about proper dosage of Benadryl, two mg per pound every eight hours. So refer to this if you need it, but make sure and read through this because it covers a lot. It talks about um, not only first aid for dogs, but it also talks about how um, to remove your dogs from traps and then care after the fact if you if you have some kind of injury from that but it's a really really good book we looked through a few different ones and this one was this one was pretty awesome so i'm going to show you how we can pack all of this amazing stuff into this bag and then we're going to talk a little bit again like i mentioned before how to use that stapler some extra packing out of this so we've got the first aid book, fits right here in the outside pouch. And there's room for a little bit more in there if you wanna throw some um, anything else. But then these little containers fit right in here. They stack right on top of each other. And then these little containers stack right on top of the, each other. And then those right on top of that. So you've got all of those things right in the bag. These bottles fit down here along the ends. 
and kind of keep everything together. We got our eyewash and chlorhexidine tucked in as well. All of these bottles are sealed perfect, so you shouldn't have any issues with leakage. Then up front, a little more packing material here. Your stapler and staple remover fit perfectly. And this pair of scissors can either fit here on this side or can fit right here in the front with the staple and staple remover. Perfectly. I cannot stress enough how um, high quality this bag is. These zippers are awesome. You know, it is made with the best of materials. This is going to be a med kit bag and like all of these guys' products. It's something I always talk about. It's, this is something you can hand down not to your own son, but to your grandson or grandchildren, granddaughter um, as a it's, a, it's a lifetime product. So we'll get this all closed up. And you have both a handle to carry it in and out of the field or carry it to wherever you need, as well as a really nice padded shoulder strap. So this is in completion, our med kit. Now, to talk about the stapler itself. Because I've heard some people say, I don't think I could do that to my dog. I don't know, yada, yada, yada. You can. So you would spray your wound. Disinfect it a little bit, and then you go ahead and you take your stapler. Move this out of the way. So you need to, if you have a wound, you're going to want to pinch that wound together so that the skin is even. Now, because I don't have a laceration on my arm, the skin is already together. But then you would take and line the stapler up itself here. You've got a little arrow on it even that shows right between here is where you want to center your wound. You take the stapler and then just pinch it together and make several staples in a row, keeping them close enough together that you don't, um, that there isn't gonna be pockets in between, but making a good seal in the individual cut along the arm. Now, really, you can't overdo the staples. Um, the better you're, all you're trying to do is damage control. Get that laceration closed up so that again, you can take them to the vet. Now, once you have staples in your arm, in this, sense, <laughs> in this situation, um, you can use the staple remover to get rid of them. Now, I wanted to do this specifically to show you, this stapler does not really hurt. I mean, yes, I can feel a little prick from each staple, but it's not like something that's going to hurt the dog. So don't feel, don't feel afraid to use it. Get the dog closed up, get them into the vet. The staple remover works very easily as a two-part process. Now, this is important. Um, without the staple remover, getting these staples out is not very easy because the staple, it goes in like this and then pinches together. And then having the staple remover, you can actually, it pops them all the way back around. Can you see that all right? Good. So we'll do the next one. And that just pops right out as well. That came out as well. So if you don't have the actual staple remover or the staple remover breaks, something like that, you have to clip in the middle of the staple and then you have to pull each side out individually. This makes it so much slicker. Don't lose your staple remover. If you do, replace it. But now, this med kit right here is valued at just over $550. We are going to give this away to one lucky winner. What we need you guys to do is like, comment, share, and follow the contest stuff that we'll be posting on our social media. This is going to be available like all of our videos early release to our Patreon members. So you get one extra week to build points. 
and the person with the most points at the win at the end of the competition is going to get this complete med kit and bag shipped out to them. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out and remember to comment, like, share, subscribe to us on YouTube for more videos just like this. Thank you.